disciples. Imagine that invitation extending even today to public universities where they're asking us, would you be, would you be interested in providing Bibles and materials in our public universities? What should we say to that? Well, yeah, of course we should. That's why we exist. We're here to share this story with them and let that powerful seed be sown into hearts where that seed can bring about a harvest that is stunning even to us all and to share that, that word with all in living in Eastern Europe and in, in Ukraine and, and then to hear about Bible competitions public school kids that take place annually. And I could tell you about Great educators in Ukraine, men like Dr. Vasil Zhukovsky, who, who has a, such a heart and a passion, who believes the Word of God and the impact and the shaping of the Word of God on the youth of Ukraine is their future. And I want you to just watch and listen to Dr. Zhukovsky as he shares his heart and he shares his vision with you. Ukraine is open to Christian education. In 1991, when Ukraine became an independent state, it refused communist education. Many, many educators said that why should we invent a wheel? We have to use uh, traditional Christian values, uh, moral values for educational process, and we did. Really, the Bible works. The Bible works, but uh, it is necessary to teach the Bible in a proper way. Uh, it's necessary to uh, teach how to read, how to understand, and what is most important, how to live according to the Bible. And we do it. We train teachers. We work much with teachers. We teach them how to work with the Bible, how to use uh, the students' peculiarities on different ages, how to teach the Bible in the elementary school, high school, uh, how to teach it uh, for students, so on and so forth, and it is not an easy thing. While learning, teaching, educating, we must know that the person is not just a body. The structure of the person is more complicated. It consists of the spirit, soul, and body. So it is spiritual and material things. And uh, educators have to pay attention at these different spheres. When we pay attention only on body, so our education will not be successful. But we can educate really the person when we pay much attention to the spiritual development. Just praying, going to church, reading the scripture, teaching uh, Christian education, teaching Christian ethics. Only in this case we can educate a good person, a good family man, and good citizen. I want to advise those who think that without scriptures, without Christian ethics, without mm, a Christian education, they can educate people and be successful. According to my 21-year experience, they are mistaken. So only using Christian moral values, only using the scriptures, uh, we could be successful in, in education of younger generation. I have uh, so many uh, great stories. Each father, each mother uh, wants to have his or her children happy and usually we invest money uh, and we understand happiness in different ways we think that our child will become happy when we buy a new laptop new car uh, something but uh, I think this it is not enough the child 
could be really developed and happy when we think and pay attention at spiritual education. It is uh, the bulwark, it is the foundation, it is uh, the most important thing. Dr. Zhukovsky says about spiritual education that it is the bulwark. It's the foundation. It's the most important thing. Do you agree with that? And how awesome is it to see a man of his educational experience and background to make that type of appeal? On the screen, you're going to see a map of Ukraine at this time. I want to give you a little bit of guidance through that. The regions or states that are outlined in black those six regions are all regions where we've been blessed by God through their invitation to place Bibles and biblical materials in thousands of public schools in those regions of Ukraine. The this regions or states outlined in purple are all in EEM. The possibility of getting Bibles and biblical materials in their public and actually, the region that I just lit up to be around, outlined in yellow, the region of Kherson, which, by the way, shares that small land border connection with Crimea, the region of Kherson, we already have in our hands official signed documents, signed, sealed, and delivered to us by their invitation, giving us permission to put Bibles and biblical materials in all their public schools in the region or the state of Kherson, and they also ask us, would you be willing to do that in our public universities? And we're working on that. If you look just a little bit to the right of the region of Kherson, to that first uh, outlined uh, region in yellow, Zaporozhye, we are very, very close to getting official documents from them completed as they are asking us for Bibles and materials for their schools. In fact, we have all the names and locations and addresses of their schools. They've kind of jumped ahead of the process. We're just waiting on the official documentation. And if you look over here to on the screen a little bit more to the left, over here in the region of Ternopil, we are very close also to getting official documentation by their invitation to put Bibles and materials in all of their public schools in Ternopil. I want to ask you that because what we have coming up is an event of which we're raising funds to, so we can answer their request. We haven't gone in and, and, and campaigned for this. We haven't gone to any of these places and knocked on the door and said, hey, would you be interested in getting Bibles and materials in your schools? We have not done that at all. They have contacted us asking us for Bibles and biblical materials. And this in a country that was communist for 70 years and a part of the Soviet Union. Now tell me God is not at work in our world today in opening up hearts, whether it be in Tuba City or in Oaxaca, Mexico at a children's home. God is active and alive all over the world. And, and I think if given the opportunity here locally, if you were given the opportunity to give so that Bibles could be reintroduced in a very positive way where Christian ethics, morals, and values from a biblical perspective could be taught in your public schools? Wouldn't you want to give to that? Well, we have been asked to do that in Ukraine. I'm telling you, I'm old enough to remember men stepping in the pulpit and praying and asking God to bring the Berlin Wall down. And praying and asking God to one day open up those doors so that we can share your powerful word with the people of Eastern Europe. And I'm just telling you folks, here it is. The answer to our prayers is before us. And the question lies in what are you and I going to do with that? now that God has opened the doors. Let's go back to Fantasia, if you would, please. Having defeated Gamora and arriving at the castle of the princess, Atreyu cannot understand why the nothing continues to advance and consume Fantasia, tearing it apart with every page that uh, Bastion turns as he reads. 
The princess explains that the only person who can stop the consuming blackness of the nothing is Bastion. That all Bastion needs to do is admit that the story is real and to become a participant in the story by giving her, the princess, a new name. And so from the pages of the book, Atreyu pleads out to Bastion, calls him by name to name the princess but for, but for Bastion to do that, he's going to have to take the risk to do what is not safe, to admit that the story is real and that it's Fantasia's only hope. And so do you know what Bastion does? You're just going to have to go rent it and find out for yourself because I'm not going to be a spoiler for you. There's a real blackness. There's a real darkness threatening to consume our world. I want you to listen very closely to this. I'm wrapping this up. What is happening in Ukraine is not about Ukraine. What is happening in Russia is not about Russia. What is happening with NATO is not about NATO allied countries. What is happening in the United States is not about the United States. Folks, it is a lot bigger than us. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, Paul says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Make no mistake about it. What is going on in that part of the world and in our country is a cosmic struggle that has been going on since the first bite of the forbidden fruit was taken. It is a struggle between light and dark, good and bad. It is a struggle between the forces of God and the forces of Satan. That is is what is going on in our world today. And we must not mask it in the affairs of men. It is the advancing, it is the influence of Satan trying to find his way above God's will in your heart and in our world today. And their only hope, their hope is that those who have embraced the story will, and are living the story will share the story, will teach them the story. We are participants in the greatest story ever told, a story of grace and hope and life and future. Don't make it the greatest story never told. It is too wonderful to keep to ourselves. It is too wonderful to not share and tell.